Okay, welcome to Coffee with Cobb. My name is Christian Bakeout, and uh, today we'll be doing a about a 20-25 minute webinar uh, on today's topic about leasing your copier and what you need to know. Um, today we have two presenters who are uh, business improvement specialists. We have Kathy Miles and we have uh, Don Amix and they'll be uh, helping us along with uh, some of the information that you may or may not know about leasing copiers. And so to start it off, I'm going to pass it over to Kathy. Kathy, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Thanks. Take Christian. it away. Thanks. So hello, everyone, and welcome again to Coffee with Cobb. We hope you're finding our webinars informative, and we just appreciate you taking a few minutes to spend some time with us in the afternoon. And for those of you who have been part of our webinars, you know that most of our topics have been very relevant to the present workday. We've talked about how to access files and folders remotely, how to choose a voice over IP solution and an IT provider, as well as security. And today we're adding to our coffee menu with a discussion on something that our customers quite often have questions about, and that is navigating through a purchase um, with the lease option. So, Don, do you remember when Jeff and Patrick, when they talked about the dark web? Oh yeah, I remember that. That's some um, pretty spooky information, but luckily it's not gonna be that scary today. It's, it's not gonna be that scary, no. but sometimes our customers can feel uncertain about all the details of a lease. And we're just hoping by the end of this webinar that you will be more comfortable with leasing and just understand some of the key details that are important with leasing. So when our customers are looking to make a purchase, about 90% of them do choose to lease over purchasing. And we'll be talking more about why they choose to lease. But know that you don't have to wait until the end of the very end of the lease term. And we'll be sharing about the timing of when you should start to consider refreshing your lease. And then finally, we're gonna show you some various options you have for the types of leases and how to prepare for your end of, of the lease. So let's start with why leasing. Well, for some organizations, it's just lack of capital. They may not have the required capital to spend for everything up front to purchase. And if you're purchasing multiple devices, it can get pretty pricey. Um, so it's often that you're just gonna need those other funds for other business expenses. And so leasing makes that possible. And in most cases, a down payment's not even required. And for a small business who's just starting out, there, there may be some challenges just in terms of not being able to get approval um, just because you haven't been in business long enough, perhaps. But know that, again, there's still some options for that. If a, a business owner, for example, is able to sign as the guarantor of the lease, they can often get approval with that. But probably the, the main reason that our customers do choose to lease over purchasing is just to get the latest and greatest technology. Um, just like our phones, our tablets, our computers, Everybody wants the latest technology, everybody wants the latest functionalities, and everybody wants the latest security features. So leasing gives you that flexibility to be able to make those changes and to upgrade to get that um, the latest technology. And then just the flexibility of terms. Um, you can lease for 36 months, 48 months, 60 months, and you can choose a term that best suits your budget. And how much you use your technology can actually help you with that. So, for example, if you're a company that really uses your copiers and printers a lot, um, you may want to ch uh, choose to lease for a shorter amount of time so that you can refresh those devices faster. So not only is there the flexibility with the lease terms, but Don's going to share with us a couple of different types of leases. Don? Thank you, Kathy. Appreciate that. Um, so today I want to talk about two different types of leases, a uh, fair market value lease and the dollar buyout. Uh, the fair market value lease is um, a lease that is also known as an operating lease and allows the customer to utilize their equipment for a designated term, as Kathy explained, uh, 36 through 60 months. And then they have a various, uh, have different options that, that you can choose from at the end of your term. Um, the majority of fair market value leases we find are for office technology and uh, typically because it is a lower monthly payment. Your uh, options at the end of the lease um, are very attractive because you can continue to lease your equipment. Um, you can return that equipment and upgrade or refresh your equipment 
based on how your business has changed, or you can buy out. So there's at the end of that lease, there's a uh, fair market value that's determined, and then that would be the buyout, and then you would own that. Um, another interesting thing that you'd want to check into is you may be able to deduct um, this monthly payment as a business expense. So that's something to investigate also. Um, the other lease, dollar buyout, that's a that's going to be a hard one to explain. You um, at the end of your term, you pay a dollar and you own it. And typically we see people using that with um, equipment that's going to be used over a longer period of time. Uh, it holds its value over a longer period of time. Uh, the monthly bill is a little bit higher because you're leasing um, the entire amount or the value of that lease and um, it will appear as an asset on your balance sheet. So again, for tax purposes, you're going to want to investigate uh, what the advantages are for you to have a dollar buyout. Uh, you may be able to deduct that uh, entire lease in the first year. You know, along with the equipment, you're going to need service and maintenance and supplies. And so you may be familiar with the term bundled leasing, and that basically allows you to take those soft costs like maintenance and service and the toner, and you put them all together into the lease for one payment. So you don't have a service contract and you don't have your lease payment. It's one payment. So that's efficient and it can be practical for you. One thing to note on this is that as your equipment gets older, and you're going through the term of your lease that you can expect uh, an annual increase for service and so your payment will change but that's based on uh, the service of your equipment. Kathy are there any other costs that you can think of that I haven't mentioned? There certainly can be um, as Don mentioned when you have a bundled lease the leasing company will be the company that will send you those invoices and so on your invoice you'll see your service which will um, itemized that will show each of your devices and the usage and then any overages associated with those devices. But you can also see some other things on your invoice. You could see um, costs for insurance. That leasing company is going to want to make sure that those devices are insured. So what I would suggest and what I recommend to my customers is make sure that you are sending either to your uh, vendor that you're working with or to the leasing company directly your evidence of commercial insurance. Um, most of your uh, property is already insured with your business, so you don't want to get charged for that twice, both from the leasing company and from your insurance company. So just make sure that you send that in so that that insurance is not reflecting on your invoice. Personal property tax is another uh, cost, and that's just something that cannot be avoided. The the leasing company is going to be assessed and charged, and so you as a company will also be uh, charged with that, and that'll be determined by your locality in terms of the rates and the frequency. And then, of course, there's the sales tax. And one thing that I would just recommend um, with the sales tax is if you are a nonprofit organization, make sure that you are submitting your sales tax exemption form either with your vendor or to the leasing company directly, just again, so that those sales taxes are not being charged for you. You know, Kathy, you and I have been talking about this as we've been preparing for this uh, and transitional billing has come up. And would you mind talking a little bit about that and explaining what transitional billing is? Sure. And I like to think of transitional billing as just like a prorated amount. It's a one time um, charge that gets assessed and it's, it's usually just kind of dependent on when you take delivery of the device uh, during that month and during the billing cycle. So it's usually just a prorated amount that covers a portion of your lease as well as your service and just appears on that one one time charge on your invoice. And then another charge that um, would be on your invoice and again this would just be on your first invoice would be a lease origination fee. And this is uh, charged by the leasing company just for those administrative charges of setting up a lease. Now Don, can you tell us a little bit more about just the timing of a lease upgrade? Yeah, I'd be glad to do that. Thank you. Um, so timing of your lease upgrade. What are you going to do as you start to end the near uh, end the term of your lease or how quickly should you start considering that? So, you know, some of the buyout considerations that we've talked about, whether you're on a dollar buyout or you have a fair market value, those are something to concern. That's something to consider. Also, uh, your business has probably changed over the course of this term. And um, as you have had a, a 
as you've had a relationship with your dealer, it's going to be very important to maintain that and keep the line of communication open. We're going to be very curious about what kind of changes in your business growth. Do you need to add additional machines? Do you need different functionality? Those kinds of things. So a good dealer is going to make an effort to ha sit down with you and have account reviews. And that's a way for uh, the dealer and you to kind of talk about how your business is changing. It allows a dealer to talk to you about industry innovations on security or functionality or uh, various uh, promotions that might be available. So those that timing of the lease is really important and it can be, it can fluctuate. So uh, I would advise you to set the expectations with your dealer uh, to have those account reviews. They're so important and it allows us to give you the information that you need to make a good business decision. You know, typically we're looking at maybe 24 months before your lease ends. If you're in a 60 month lease, uh, we want you to have time to make those decisions um, uh, in your, you know, for your best, um, for the best decision that you can make. Um, we definitely don't want to wait too much before 90 days out. And um, because there may be some uh, information in your lease that um, has like some notification that you're going to have to give the lease, the, uh, the leasing company. Um, and you're going to need to let them know in that window whether you're going to renew or whether you're going to return or whether you're going to upgrade. So some penalties that you may uh, incur, obviously, if you terminate your lease early. And um, again, communicating with your leasing company is important. That lease is between you and your leasing company. So that communication is important. Um, as you change your service, that's between your dealer and you too. So communication is really important. And again, I mentioned the contract, knowing what that fine print is in your contract, if you have a window uh, that you need to be communicating your uh, intentions for that. So, Kathy? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Just with the, the good communication um, with your, um, your vendor and your dealer, making sure that you are given that proper notification nobody likes surprises at the end of the lease we don't like them either um, so just making sure that there's been a good discussion about who's taking care of the buyout who's taking care of the ship back those are all important things that you're going to want to make sure that are discussed just so again there's no surprises at the end of your lease so finally at at the end of your lease you have basically three options you can either upgrade and you're gonna work with your dealer to get your new devices and they should make it very seamless as far as coming and taking your existing equipment and getting that taken out effortlessly and then your new equipment coming in, um, you may choose to purchase. So there again, as Don talked about the fair market value or the dollar buyout, you might just be purchasing uh, those devices at the end of the lease or you might be returning um, You know, maybe there's Unfortunately, a situation here at the end of your lease where perhaps your um, your company is, is not going to be around next year and hopefully that's not the case. But if that is, then you just need to uh, simply return those devices back. Um, that would be uh, an option for you as well. So hopefully today as we have um, talked about just the details of the lease and the terms and what it looks like. Um, hopefully we've made it a little bit more clear, a little less intimidating. And as always, you know, we do record our uh, webinars. So today is no different. You can always go back um, and view this recording if you do have some questions. And we also have some blogs um, that have covered the topics that we've covered today. So feel free to go out there and uh, read the blogs if, if you still have some questions about the lease processing. So now, Christian, I'll just kick it back to you. Thank you, Kathy. And uh, as Kathy just said, uh, we do have the uh, blogs on the website. Um, if you're seeking more information or if you've missed any part of this webinar, uh, we do record them and then put them back on the uh, the uh, website under the Coffee with Cobb tab. That's on the uh, top row of, the, of our website. Um, so if there's anything you're missing or any um, other information you're looking for, it can usually be found within our blogs or uh, under Coffee with Cobb. Um, so for our next Coffee with Cobb, we'll be skipping next week and um, we're now on a new bi-weekly schedule. So on September the 27th, 
uh, we'll be continuing our security series and we'll be talking about uh, social engineering and um, what to do about combating that as far as letting any information leak out from your company and how um, hackers and other malicious groups uh, siphon uh, information from your company to get to either other companies or to misuse information about your company in some some ways. So uh, after that, we've got the Q&A. And it looks like we already have some questions queued up. Um, let's see here. So Kathy and Don, I'll leave this to either of you. Um, someone is asking or is stating that they've heard someone talk about releasing uh, their copiers at the end of the lease. Uh, what in the world does that mean? And Kathy, this looks one. This looks like it's uh, directed towards you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll be happy to take that. Um, yes, releasing is an option at the end of your lease. Um, just had some customers do that recently. Um, releasing is a good option if you have a device that maybe you have not put a lot of volume on. Um, maybe the, the usage has been kind of sporadic, or maybe it's just been something that you didn't get a lot of use of. And um, there's really no need at this point, since it's working well, it's, it's low mileage, um, don't really have a need at this point to upgrade or get a new device. There is an opportunity to release, and when you do release, um, it would help to reduce your monthly payment. And typically with a release, you would actually be owning that device after three years. Um, so again, it, it is an option. It, it might be a good option if you don't have a lot of, of um, clicks or uh, you know a lot of information there with your um, device, but um, it is something that you would own after the three years after you've released it. Gotcha. All right. Let's see the next question. Uh, doesn't the copier dealer uh, know the fair, fair market value at the beginning of the lease? Who would like to tackle that question? Um, I'll, I'll speak to that. Um, okay. I would say, yeah, I mean, there is uh, there's a value of what the equipment is worth, but with the fair market value lease, you're basically financing part of it. So when you get to the end of your term, there's still a value on the end of it that still has to be paid. So, right. um, yeah, that's what makes your uh, payment a little bit lower than with a dollar buyout. Gotcha. All right, let's see. Next question. Uh, what about short term leases? Um, this person would like to be interested in a three month or six month lease, uh, especially in this uncertain time of coronavirus. Do you want me to take that one, Don? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, that, no, that is a good question. Um, typically, you know, our leases typically start out like with a 36 month lease. If there was a three month or a six month, um, that actually might fall under more of the category of just kind of renting the device. Um, that's something too that is is not something that we typically do just because, you know, with these devices, um, you know, you, you could be putting a lot of uh, clicks and a lot of volume on those devices for a very short amount of time. Um, so there again, it's not something that we necessarily couldn't try to work out with a company, but generally the, the leases and, and what you're going to be investing probably would not fit under the realm of like a three month lease or a six month lease because it's not it's not really a, a, a lease. So I hope that answers the question. That sounds sounds like a fit. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What happens if I don't do anything after my lease ends? What happens after that? I'll take this, Kathy, if that's OK. Sure. Since we're kind of sharing back and forth a little bit. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to assume that at the end of your lease, well, with a dollar buyout, you have a dollar payout and then you own your equipment. So with a fair market value, you're making a payment. You have service on there, obviously because uh, you have bundled lease and what happens is you're going to continue to make that payment um, upon your second year through the end of the term of your lease 
as I mentioned earlier, there's going to be an increase, a nominal increase every year because as your equipment gets older, um, it costs more to maintain it. So you're going to continue with that and typically that's on your anniversary date. So you can expect to have that. And then um, it's really important, as I mentioned earlier, to look at your lease agreement and understand whether or not your leasing company auto renews you because you may not be able to just say I'm finished. I want to return. It may just if you haven't notified them in a certain window, it may auto renew you for a certain period of time. All right. Let's see. This person is asking if they can lease computers and can the payments be deferred? Also, if we sell the business, is the lease transferable? Let me take that one, Don. Yeah, if you want to, sure. <laughs> I guess let me address the, the first part of the question, which I think, Christian, you might have to remind me, was it can do can we lease, lease computers? Yes. Um, our, our managed IT services um, that falls up you know, with our managed IT would probably be a, a better resource for, for that. We um, with Cobb don't specifically lease computers. Um, now in terms of if you are a business that perhaps um, is bought by another organization and you want to transfer that lease, you can do that. There would have to be an application process for like the new entity to get approval. And there's a, a nice fee associated with that as well. So it is something that you can transfer a lease, but there would be some costs associated with that. I think that Does was that all answer, of that question. Did I answer yeah, all I think, that question? I think that was it for that one. Uh, let's you did a good see. job, Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> now, this is this is a busy uh, question and answer session on this one here. Um, how much does copier technology really change over a three-year period? You want to just keep ping ponging, go back and forth, Kathy. <laughs> you want to take that one? Work this one down. I'll take this one because I'll take this one. But if I get on one, then I'm gonna let you have the rest of them. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> How much does, how often does uh, technology change for uh, like MFP technology, that type of office technology? Is that how it's, is that the question, Christian? That's it. Okay. So obviously, I mean, I think this is, this is kind of an easy question uh, to answer in the sense of like, how often does your uh, phone technology change? How often does your TV technology change? How often does, you know, these, um, all the technology that we see in electronics and those kinds of things, there's always a constant trying to do better. The market's always pushing you to become more efficient. So um, my short answer would be, we're seeing it change three to five years is what, you know, typically we're comfortable with talking about. And I think that's one of the reasons why this leasing um, Coffee with Cobb is important and showing you those options over owning and the different types of leases. Good answer. Let's see, next question. Uh, does Cobb only work with one leasing company or do you offer other options? Do you have leasing companies tailored to companies with bad credit? So it's a seems like a uh, two prong question. <laughs> I can take that one, Don. Um, yes, um, Cobb does work with multiple leasing companies. Um, in terms of, of you know your credit, I guess I would answer that is, um, you know, we're kind of working with our leasing companies. So kind of depending on what that looks like, they would let us know whether uh, your credit would allow for a lease. Um, and if that's not the case, if, if you don't have approval for that, um, then we would just discuss with you some, some other options that we could uh, either refer you to or just some other options for how you might be able to secure funding for that. All right. Let's see here. We're getting more questions. Uh, can Cobb offer a 84 or 96 month lease? Um, I think that's really kind of up to the leasing companies we work with. I know Cobb mm -hmm. does um, do some leases, so I think that's going to depend on the situation and um, if you, we'd love to talk to you about that. So 
reach out to us and let's talk about how we can help you. All right. And the next question, uh, is it possible to upgrade a portion of their fleet rather than all of their machines? I'll, I'll take that one too, Kathy. Okay. Um, because the short answer is yes, you can upgrade a portion of your fleet. And I think Kathy kind of mentioned something earlier about you may have um, you may have some pieces in your fleet or you may have a piece that you have used uh, less than what you thought. And you may have other pieces that you have used extensively. And so that can be something that we can discuss. Um, again, that's kind of a customizable thing, I believe, but the short answer is yes. And again, we'd love to talk to you about what your search certain situation is and explore all those options for you. All right. And this question is asking, how long are auto renewals? Is it one month, 12 months, or 36 months? Do you want me to take that one, Don? Sure. Go ahead. No. Take it away. <laughs> and I, you know, the the best answer for that would also be it, it depends. It depends on the leasing company. There are some companies, uh, some leasing companies that will do an auto renewal uh, month to month. There are others that may commit you to another six months or another twelve months. So, um, kind of along those this, um, same answer as you know, what if I don't do anything. Well, you, you could get locked into not doing anything for another six months or to another year. Um, so it is something that you want to make sure that you understand the leasing terms with the uh, leasing company that you're working with, just so that you know what um, what that time frame might be. OK. And uh, see, this person's asking, what if I just can't pay their bills um, as a business in the time of coronavirus? and can they ask how to forgive the remaining balance of my lease since these are terrible times? I guess they're asking for our deferments. Um, I think I think one of the things that I feel like I keep repeating over and over, so I apologize, I'm going to do it again, is communication is key. Um, this year has been a tough year uh, during this pandemic, and um, we need to, as as a dealer, we need to know if your service changes. And I think I mentioned earlier that your lease is between your you, your lease agreement is between you and your leasing company. So, you know, looking for options if your business is struggling is, um, is something we would want to know about right away and try to help you explore those options. So I know in the past, the deferment has been an option um, and obviously your leasing company and the dealer want to work with you to help you in your time of trouble. That sounds good. So make sure we keep up lines of communication so we can help. Absolutely. Better. Uh, does Cobb serve as the leasing company or does Cobb use only third party companies to lease equipment? Uh, Don, I think you answered this, but I'll, I'll let you go ahead and take this one again. <laughs> sure. Uh, thanks. Appreciate that, Christian. Um, so we work with a couple of different dealers and um, so they are third party and and there are times where we have Cobb also does that as well. And does it cost more to lease a refurbished or used copier than it does to lease a brand new copier? Let me take that Can one. Take that one? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> You don't want and me to take again, all this. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> there again, it, it would probably depend. I think it, it would, you know, generally it would stand to reason that a, a new one would be a little bit more expensive to to lease. But you know, if you had a, a refurb unit with all the bells and whistles, it's it's got a Z fold, a finisher, a fax that it, it can make coffee, it can do all kinds of things. Then you know that that might end up being a little bit more expensive than a, a newer, smaller, basic fun, uh, function printer. Um, but generally, the the refurb unit that you would be leasing um, generally should be a little less expensive than the newer one. Sounds right. Let's see, do any leasing companies charge a setup fee for anything? Um, similar and what does that setup fee actually cover 
I'll take that one, Don. I'm, I'll answer it in the way I think the question is being asked. Um, there, there is a setup which I mentioned, like the origination fee. So that's the one time charge for setting up the lease itself. Um, and that can be you know, maybe 95 to $100 for that lease setup. If you're referring to setup of the devices themselves, um, that would actually be a part of the service of the install uh, with the new equipment. Um, and there would not be a charge with Cobb to come in and set up or network your devices. So hopefully I answered that question depending on what what the reference was to. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll, we'll answer two more and we'll, we'll cut for time here. Um, why would a leasing company charge me personal property tax on a copier that I do not own, um, but I am only leasing it? Who'd like to take that one? I think Kathy would like to take that one. She yeah, was talking about that earlier, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it comes back to those other costs. Um, you know, the, the personal property tax is, is something that the, the leasing company will also be assessed. Um, so they're going to pass that on to you. It's, it's like if you were to lease a car, um, there's personal property tax. Um, so unfortunately, it's just um, a tax for personal property that um, does get charged. And um, with the leasing company kind of owning that device and, and being charged for that, they're going to pass that cost on to the, the organization. All right. And last question. Uh, why are leases non-cancelable? That's a word. Uh, that language scares me, is what this person stated. <laughs> Non-cancelable? Yes. Um, that is a good question. I, you know, my first reaction would be, uh, we've entered into a, the leasing company and the customer have entered into a agreement. So uh, honoring that agreement, I think is paramount. I know we've just kind of addressed some issues about uh, deferring payments or if your business is in trouble on those communications, but communication. But um, I think the short answer that I have, if I'm understanding the question right, is you've um, made, you have obligated yourself to that and they um, have, so you're in a partnership with them. And I think that's the answer that I have. Would you add anything to that, Kathy? Am I getting that? Yeah, right. I think that's that's right. All right, sounds good. Um, now we're going to go ahead and uh, sort of end this webinar. And uh, if you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to us at coffee at cobtechnologies.com if we weren't able to answer any questions for you. And uh, if you have any further or follow up questions, uh, we'll get you in contact with either Don or Kathy or any of our other uh, business improvement specialists and we'll get you set up and ready to go. Thank you for joining us.